Here's an interesting survey. In the US, agree or disagree, Elon Musk is a good ambassador for electric vehicles. People on the left, only 34% agree, 66% disagree. People on the right, 61% of them agree and 39% disagree. And this is quite revealing and interesting. Of those that favor the former president in the US, 44% of them mostly view Elon Musk favorably and only 10% mostly unfavorably. Of those that support the current president, it's a, the, it's a complete opposite. And then check this out. So obviously Elon Musk thinks that uh, climate change is a somewhat serious issue, but of those that think that climate change is serious, only 14% of them view Elon Musk favorably and 44% of them view him mostly unfavorably. And then you can see that one party clearly has a preference for Elon Musk and uh, the other party clearly does not like Elon Musk. Keep in mind though, this is a survey of just 600 voters. But well, it's pretty interesting to see these findings. Supporting climate change and then being against Elon Musk, these two things don't really quite go together. Now, based on this study, 50% of Republicans and 75% of Democrats can be convinced on purchasing an EV. 50% of the US is independent. Assuming similar split, addressing cost of ownership, range, and charging network will cause a gigantic shift to EVs, especially cost. Here's what's going on with people not wanting EVs. They say, I don't want an EV. Then they try it. And then they start thinking about it. And then they actually really want an EV. So I wouldn't take these surveys too seriously. Oh, I don't want an EV. Well, you haven't tried. And coming back to this, James says, but hurt or not, Democrats are much more likely to purchase an EV for now and make up Tesla's core customer demographic an opportunity in the US due to Tesla's still low US market share. How much this influences their purchase decision is another question, but it surely does not help. This is an example of the damage Elon has done to Tesla's brand in the US, and there are other examples like this in other important progressive countries in the world, like Germany with big auto markets. Tesla shareholders paid for Twitter once in 2022, and we keep paying for it with every unnecessary political controversy that Elon decides he wants to stick his nose into. Dylan though says all this talk about politics ruining Tesla, am I the only one that thinks most normal people don't consider politics at all when buying things? Sure, there are some loud extremes on both sides, but most regular foes just want the best products at the best prices. If I ever start buying inferior products because someone has a different political view than me, please check me into an institution for help. To anyone that boycotts Tesla for whatever reason, that says way more about them than it does about Tesla. In my life, I have never not buy something because, oh, this was a product made by a Democrat. Oh, that was made by a Republican. I've never done it. James responds to Dylan, buying a car is an emotional decision in part because of the high cost of the transaction. Automakers literally spend billions of dollars every year to nurture their brands and create that emotional connection to their prospective customers in hopes that these customers will feel like they can relate feel represented by the brand or the product. Elon Musk has basically used this dynamic, but in the opposite way and created reasons for people to avoid Tesla. Why? Because he's a narcissist, says James. People who choose other EVs because of Elon or for whom Tesla is less attractive, this requiring exorbitant price cuts to increase the value proposition to help compensate for a lack of demand from turned off consumers are not at fault. They are voting with their wallets. The person at fault is Elon and only Elon. Dylan though fires back with, I'm arguing the percentage of people doing this isn't going to have a material impact on the long-term trajectory of Tesla. I also believe there are more important matters for Elon to expose and speak on than Tesla sales figures. If our country collapses in the process, car sales won't matter at all as we will all have much bigger problems. And of all the companies and woke leaders in the world, you want to boycott Tesla? To me, that's ridiculous. This is getting heated. James says, the country isn't collapsing. Free speech isn't at risk. Elon bought Twitter for one thing, power. The power to have his platform and do and say what he wants 
when he wants. The reasons he provides for this are just a smokescreen. I used to believe in his words. One day, you'll see things as I do. It's really quite interesting that James said, free speech isn't at risk. He might have added that Twitter files were also not real and that the government was not at all using Twitter for political purposes. Definitely that did not happen, right? That's the kind of vibe I'm getting from him. Free speech isn't at risk, says Dylan. James, this is an absurd take, my guy. I like the choice of words here. Are you not watching what's going on with nearly every other social media platform? Have you not seen what our government has been up to quite literally censoring the opposition? For example, on YouTube, up until very recently, you had to be extremely careful what you said. The RFJ interview that Farzad posted on YouTube with Elon Musk, I think it was in the summer of 2023, it was removed from YouTube and then Farzad fought it and it was put back on YouTube and it got 300 views in a matter of months, I think. And now Farzad reposted it recently just now and it got hundreds of thousands of views. Free speech isn't at risk. Although I have to say that free speech is certainly not at risk as long as you say exactly what the government wants you to say. Even if you argue the country isn't collapsing yet, that doesn't mean it's not at risk to do so in the future if things keep going this way. Here's another happy Tesla customer who just tried FSD 12 after installing it on his vehicle. I am yet to see someone who was seriously disappointed by FSD V12. Everyone says it's basically better. Wow, SpaceX seeks a waiver to launch Starship at least nine times this year. I am really excited about this one. Starship is the rocket that will really help us colonize Mars. So this is a big deal. The next launch is possibly as soon as within three weeks. Elon posted a few somewhat political things today. Uh, he posted, I just typed in a Google query on my phone and the top two choices are pro-censorship. Why censorship is important, is important in social media. Then Elon reposted this, proud to be the first AG to have removed a Soros-backed prosecutor from office. Elon also reposted this and he also reposted this. Elon also posted, every joke is a tiny revolution. The woke mind virus is killing Western civilization. Google does the same thing with their search results, Facebook and Instagram too, and Wikipedia. This is what Elon reposted. Google's woke AI makes Vikings black. I probably have some Viking blood in me, by the way. And the Pope, a woman. And this is an image you get for founding father. All right. So I personally don't mind Elon posting some of these political things, even though I do think this is a negative for Tesla, but I'm willing to pay that price personally. Anyway, did you know that the New York City mayor, Eric Adams, is planning to give up to $10,000 to every illegal immigrant? Even though I personally don't live in the US, I there's a good chance I will move there. And I personally think the US is by far the most important country in the world right now. If somehow the US falls, the world is going to be a very different place. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't yet. And wow, this Cybertruck. <laughs> wow. I thought this was AI at first when I saw the picture, but now we are seeing some video footage too. And this is one of the coolest things I have ever seen. They made the Cybertruck even cooler. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in tomorrow's episode.